Hello, this is Nick Hess, the Apple Campus Rep here at CU Boulder. And in this podcast tutorial, I want to talk to you about some best practices and some great habits to have for all Mac users while on campus and outside of campus. Mac OS X is the world's most advanced operating system and has some great proven technology to help protect you against outside threats. But it's always great to do things on a regular basis to keep your Mac safe and secure while on campus and elsewhere. The first one I want to talk to you about is software updates. You can always find those by going up here to the Apple menu and clicking on software update. Apple usually notifies you automatically about software updates as they come along, but it's always good to occasionally check this and see if you have anything that you missed. The most important ones to look for are always going to be Mac OS X updates to the operating system and Apple's security updates. Those come from time to time as there are new threats that are created out on the internet or they see new invulnerabilities that the Mac platform might have that they update you and want to protect you from. Right here you'll see I just have a few minor updates to QuickTime and iTunes and these are usually just bug fixes sometimes they include uh, minor feature upgrades um, but we'll just go down here and click to install these three items you'll need to put in an administrator password agree to the terms and then you'll restart your computer they'll install the updates and you'll restart with all the new updates installed the next thing I wanted to talk about were passwords now hopefully information about choosing good passwords is pretty well known on the internet today but there are a few Mac specific things regarding OS 10 that I want to talk to you about the most important of which is the inclusion of the password hint. Now here I'm installing some software and it's asking me for my administrator password. This is no big deal, um, but your administrator password is used for much more important things, such as accessing email, uh, changing or deleting important documents, or even in some cases accessing other passwords that you may have saved on the internet. Uh, those could be bank accounts, what have you. So. What we'll do here is I'm going to enter the incorrect password once, it's going to give me a message, twice, and if you put in the incorrect password three times, Mac OS X gives you a password hint. It says you attempted to authenticate too many times, password hint, what are you making? So even you as viewers could probably be able to figure out my password at this point. What am I making? I'm making a podcast, and that's what my password is. Uh, for this demo scenario. Obviously I wouldn't choose something so easy uh, in a regular case, but for this you can see just how easy a normal person, even a person who didn't know me at all, uh, could guess my password and gain access to my computer. So even choosing a password hint is a very important part of choosing your password too. So you want to make your password hint something that only you can make a connection with, something that's abstract enough where it'll remind you but nobody else could really figure it out. So that's the main thing that's specific to Mac OS X. I also want to refer to just some general password best practices and some good do's and don'ts. So I'll go back to the Colorado ITS website and just go through a few of these and you can check out these on your own as well. So good things to have. Long password obviously is always better than a short one. Uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and punctuation are always good to have. There are some punctuation you can't have. Um, they say colons, pound signs, stuff like that. Uh, I always like the explanation points, dollar signs, stuff like that that's easy to remember. Um, but also just some do's and don'ts they have on this website. Obviously don't include your name, any easy, easily remembered uh, names or relatives or favorite things or places you've lived. Those are all pretty standard uh, practices for choosing good passwords. So I just wanted to go over that and Mostly, uh, there's not too much difference between choosing a system password for your Mac or choosing a good password for, let's say, your bank statements online. But these are all really good practices to have and something that's always good to keep in mind.